evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, viewers. My name is Matthias Ofiku, and welcome to Evening Review. Uh, let's have a look at today's paper. Tonight we are joined in studio by the Popular Democratic Movement's uh, Secretary for International Relations, also the party's chief whip in the National Assembly, Mr. Vipakuya Mwarukwa. Good evening, sir, and welcome. Good evening, Matthias. Uh, good evening, uh, Namibians. Well, it's good to have you. Um, Happy New Year. Thank you. Likewise. How are you? I'm fine. You're good? Uh, just been doing farming duties. The rain has been very kind to some to the country. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Okay. No, no. Thank, thank you for. We just, for, for we just pray for, for the rest of the country <laughs> to, to receive uh, good rains as okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Surely. Uh, Mr. Maruga, let's get into things. Um, we know that uh, during the last uh, parliament you were the youngest, not anymore. Mm -hmm. Can you just brief us, briefly tell us of that journey, how it has been, and how you've grown into that uh, in that space? <laughs> yes. Um, indeed, it was a very uh, challenging time. Mm -hmm. uh, the last parliament. In fact, I was the only youth, not only just the youngest. Unlike this parliament where you have, I think, about, uh, where you have maybe about 10 youth or nine youth. Um, but I viewed my role as, as a road opener uh, to ensure that in the next parliament we will have more youth uh, to, 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 to make myself, to stand up, to be counted and to ensure that there is belief in the Namibian youth. And I believe uh, to a larger extent I sort of have succeeded, but it has always been, of course, with challenges in that, um, you know, when you're with elders and you were brought up with elders, you were brought up with respect, there's always a, a specific decorum that you had to, mm -hmm. that you had to observe. And continuously you were told uh, as an African child, and mind you, I was 31 when I joined parliament. Mm -hmm. In Europe, that's a man. Yeah. In Africa, you're still <laughs> a child, you know, a child with children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think, um, it, it was a challenge, but uh, one that I think nonetheless one has stifled, or I hope the public views it that way. Yeah. But my, I made it my job to open the road for others, and I believe I have. Okay. Well, w um, having served there and still serving in that house, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges as far as youth in Namibia are concerned? One, it's political parties mm -hmm. to, to start with. Mm -hmm. You know, each youth in each political party would have dynamics peculiar to that political organization. Say for instance the ruling party. The MPs in total of the ruling party are allegiant not to the Namibian people but are allegiant to the SG to an extent where in the other parliament, not this one per se, where you would have seen the SG of the ruling party shutting the likes of Nikundi. Uh, I'm not talking about my Sophia, and I'm talking about a predecessor, saying, you, please switch off your light. Then Nekundi would, would do that. Um, and I believe uh, the lack of sufficient senior positions in political parties is the biggest challenge, I believe, to the, to the Namibian youth mm -hmm. uh, in, in political space. But I think it's a challenge that the youth of the modern parliament or this current parliament are sort of weathering it down. If you look at uh, PDM per se, um, the youth are allowed to express themselves as, as at will uh, in parliament. I as whip, uh, I've, I, don't, can't, I cannot recall at any point in time where I've whipped any uh, youth for saying what, what they want to say. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So, so what you are essentially saying is that uh, the more youth that comes into the system, the better. Is that the solution? Yes. I think, yes, yes, of course, of course, definitely. Uh, I mean, with youth comes imagination, comes energy. With youth comes proper foresight. Um, you know, you have uh, the likes of Ina Hengari, the likes of uh, Winnie Mongo, I'm talking about PDM now, and of course, uh, Utara Motu. You know, these young guys, of course, including myself, I'm, also, I'm not youth, but I'm young. You know, you, you, we, we, we are in this country knowing that biology allows and God willing, we are still to be here for the next 50 years. So whatever we say, whatever we do, we do it progressively thinking about a country where we still have to be. Of course, uh, not saying that the elder folks don't do that. Of course they do. But at the same time also, I think they view that future not in respect of themselves, but their children. And, uh, uh, and to, to a larger extent, they skew it uh, yeah. in favor of their children. What am I saying? There, there, there was a day that I was having a conversation in Parliament, and I said, uh, uh, the ruling party continues to loot this country dry, uh, knowing that they will not be there. The Honorable Carlos Ledvine said, no, we also have children in this country. Uh, so how can you say we, we, are, we are looting, thinking that, or knowing that we will not be here when our mm -hmm. children will be here? Yeah. Of course, the answer to that will be simple. You are looting for your children. Yeah. Uh, uh, not Carlin, I'm talking about the ruling party, those that are looting. So um, generally, youth brings foresight, youth will improve this yeah. country, youth would improve parliament. Yeah, um, you, you're bringing me to another segment of this interview. Um, opposition parties are always quick to, to throw stones towards the ruling party. Mm -hmm. I mean, your party, for instance, for the past, or since independence, is the longest serving opposition party. Oh, so what have you done to prevent the looting? You've been in parliament as an official position for very long yes. as a party. Okay, we have been official opposition since 1990 up to 1997 and then of course with uh, including a coalition with um, UDF beyond that but after that it has been RDP and so forth so we've not been for the past 30 years consistently that but yes. be that as it may let me answer the question this way the job of an officially uh, official opposition is to raise of course issues because we don't have the executive power to do to use public coffers, to use the state machinery to improve the people's lives. So what we do is to lobby, to make people aware of what is wrong, and to direct government as to what we think is the right course to go. Now let's have a look at the housing crisis and the land crisis. PDM was the first to point out that the resettlement program is wrong. Others followed. Housing. When the president of PDM, Henry Vanani, went and slept in a bushes in the informal settlement, people were calling it a political gimmick. But it was actually a protest against destitute living conditions. Mm -hmm. Others followed suit because of that. Let's talk about corruption. We consistently have talked about, raised the issue of corruption, talked about the looting that is continuously going on. And when I'm saying we, really I'm talking about the PDM that I am part of the leadership of. Mm -hmm. um, not the, the, its predecessor, the, yeah. the, 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 the DTA, because I have sort of really a lack of uh, um, proper... Uh, but, but, you can, but you can't divorce yourself I, from I, the I'm, I'm, of not, I'm, not, I'm not divorcing myself from that leadership, Yes. but I'm not answering for DTE per se, mm -hmm. uh, we, we answer for PDM, mm -hmm. or the current leadership that, that, that we are part of. But So all these issues we've raised, in fact, we've gone to a to large extent of calling, to a larger extent of calling for, for, for um, marches. Mm -hmm. uh, be that as it may, you here and there you have uh, supportages and you have people who also don't join. And one thing about our country and the citizenry is also the fact that you know, as, as, as official opposition, you call for something. Let's march against um, one of these um, public, for, for one of these public discourses, or for, for it. And then you have minimal number of people, say for instance, turning up. Mm -hmm. But it also so happens that when other groups, say for instance, like AR, mm -hmm. uh, calls for a march, 
we would be the first to be there at all times. Mm -hmm. um, but having been official opposition for such a long time, there are a number of things that we've raised that others followed suit, like I said. But also if you look at the current uh, uh, leadership of the city of Hindu, political leadership of the city of Hindu, it is our realization as, as, the, as, as official opposition that it, it was important for all of us, including us, to join that coalition to ensure that we as opposition take charge of Windows. So it's, those are some of the things that we did. That's why we are part of, part of that mm -hmm. leadership. So are, are you saying then that the findings, especially from the opposition side, um, are, are ignored by those who have executive powers to make the decisions that needs to affect change? Oh, yes. I mean, we have the Public Accounts Committee that's always headed by the opposition party. Yes. But we've never seen a really a real comprehensive report in this regard to say this is what we've done. These are some of the recommendations we've made. It's not been implemented, so there's nothing more we can do. Where are these things? Yes, you're, you're quite correct. Let, 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 me say, let me say the following. I, and I'm entitled to say that because I'm part of that body. The Parliament of Namibia is a toothless dog. Period. In sense? I'll, I'll come to that. The Parliament of Namibia, the ACC, the Ombudsman's Office, all these things when it comes to acting against the executive mm -hmm. is toothless why am i saying it's toothless i'm not saying that members of parliament are not active in pointing these things out but what i'm saying is that as members of parliament we point these things out we give it to government but government does not execute but it is the job of the lead of of the management of parliament to ensure that these things are followed up on it is the job of the, of the leader of parliament, who is the speaker, to ensure that the resolutions of parliament are carried out. You are a journalist. Go and research the, 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 the resolutions that have been taken by parliament, even for the past 10 years. You, you realize that 99% of them are just resolutions and government does nothing about it. When you ask about it and the minister comes to answer, the minister would always have the protection of of, of, of the speaker or the deputy speaker of the National Assembly mm -hmm. not to be put into a, into a political corner. Mm -hmm. That makes, and, and, and I've said this before and I will say it again, the political leadership of parliament that is through the speaker's office makes parliament a, a, a miniature of what it could be in terms of a third leg of the Namibian state. Mm -hmm. So yes, the executive does ignore uh, parliament in total and, 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 and they have the ruling party MPs to protect themselves. And we must also not let go of the fact that you do have opposition parties that collude. You do have opposition parties that collude with, with the ruling party mm -hmm. in protecting the ruling party against the wishes of Namibian people. You, you look at uh, the current configuration, you talked about the, 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 the Public Accounts Committee. I think the most effective, uh, the most effective uh, Public Accounts Committee was really that of Mr. Deval when he was chairing, and that of Mr. Mambera, who raised, Mambera specifically raised a number of issues that he brought to the fore, and issues really that, that then uh, was, was, was taken on board, uh, sort of. Mm -hmm. But in this current parliament, we have apparently a public accounts chairperson, mm -hmm. a chairperson from opposition, but a chairperson that is in, 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 in an illegal structure, i.e. The, 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 that public accounts committee is illegal because mm -hmm. all the committees are illegal. Yet you have s political parties, opposition that see it fit to collude with the ruling party. And in fact, the ruling party have, uh, have this notion of, well, you can stand against us, but we will do whatever we do. We will ignore whatever you say because we will always have an ability to buy off some of you. Mm -hmm. And you would have seen when the national, uh, these regional elections yeah. pr proceeded, that the ruling party actually went and pointed out that actually the only parties that we work with is, uh, uh, is UDF and one other. Yeah. So, so some of these things are things that compromise the effectiveness of parliament, mm -hmm. uh, but specifically it is contributing causes to the ruling party um, ignoring yeah. the resolutions of parliament. Yeah. Good and well. Um to blame the ruling party, um, you are in politics after all. 
but we always know that if plan A doesn't work, you need to have a plan B. Yes. So do you then just surrender and say just because the others are bought off, there's nothing we can do? Definitely not. We see parties in other countries uh, lodging court cases and so on when they are not happy with processes. Um, what, what can be done in Namibia? Yes, of course. Uh, the, the judicial way is one of the ways to go about it, to litigate. That's one. But two is to make yourself heard. And from the side of PDM, I believe we have... Uh, at least in the past seven years, uh, the last parliament and this parliament, we've stood up and, and we're counted. Mm -hmm. we, we stood in the face of, 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 of a number of things that the ruling party wanted to do, but they can't do. Even the committees that we're talking about that I'm saying is illegal. Mm -hmm. We, of course, together with other opposition parties, the RPM, um, uh, NIF, mm -hmm. um, to a larger extent, I, I'm not mentioning the exhaustive yeah. list. There are others, of course, okay. that are not colluding with the ruling party. We have stood in the face in the face of of of, 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 of illegal structures, mm -hmm. structures that would serve the purposes of the ruling party, and not uh, not necessarily the, the Namibian people. So yeah. we have made our voice heard, and we have alerted Namibian people that the ruling party is uh, uh, a villain. Okay. Yeah. Um, speaking of committees, um, there's always been that this notion that. Uh, MPs don't really understand the work of government. Um, by that I'm referring, I'm not referring to going out into the regions on familiarization visits and come back and the parliament clerks draw up a report and it's tabled and it gathers dust. Mm. In the sense that, I'll give you one example. Um, there's been recent revelations that uh, Fishcore, the Steve Flower Company, has uh, donated money to Swapo. Mm -hmm. This was never picked up by these committees that, are, that ought to pick up this, some of these dealings in mm. government. Mm. So what is the way forward in this regard? Yes, I think one of the things, uh, uh, Matthias, that MPs generally should be doing, including myself and all the others, is that when these reports are tabled in parliament, they must, uh, the financial reports of these institutions, they must be scrutinized thoroughly. They must be scrutinized and from that should come debates debates that will bring out some of these things. I remember one of these ministers, executive ministers, that said, sure, if only the opposition read these reports, they would crush us, which is true. So that, that, is, that should be the, 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 the starting point, is to scrutinize and read. But, but secondly also, um, people sometimes don't take the job serious generally. I was part of the Legal Affairs Committee last year, or the, the other parliament. And through, when we spoke, uh, as we were speaking, debating in one of these committee meetings, I, I said, folks, we can't be directed by staff, technical staff, support staff, as to what to do. We must give them directions. We must do the research on these topics and tell them that we want the report to look like this. One of these MPs had the audacity to tell me that, no, I'm not a researcher, I'm not going to do research. Mm -hmm. That's a profound lack of understanding what, of why you are there as a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. How do you as a member of parliament say you are not there to do research? Yeah. Consulting the community is research. Mm -hmm. Reading a book is research. Uh, maybe yeah. he understood research to, be, to, to mean reading. <laughs> so, yes, I, I think, uh, and, and more so in the last parliament. But I think this parliament, this current one, yeah. Um, we, you have folks that will not relent at anything. Mm -hmm. That's one. Okay. Uh, as 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 as, a, as parliament as a whole, that's one. Yeah. But but two, I think the ruling party is sort of saved by Corona. In because the sense? in the sense that we sh parliament does not function as normal. You know, you don't have everyone sit together. Yeah. Uh, you have some people. You only have fifty people sitting there. So the contributions and the debates do, do, do not really flow. Mm -hmm. So had that not been the case, uh, I believe you would have seen a parliament, especially from P PDM side, uh, uh, guns blazing. You would have uh, you would have seen that research really coming out. I'm not saying it doesn't come out. Yeah. I, think, I still think it does. Mm -hmm. But I think you would have seen more vibrancy, more fire from 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 PDM side specifically. Yeah. Um, let Let's go back to 2015. Um, I, ca I can't let you go without uh, speaking about the infamous fish rod scandal. Mm. Um, I, I believe when those amendments were passed in 2015, you were part of the parliament. Yes. So, uh, how did that go through? We opposed. Mm -hmm. We opposed. 
That is one of the bills that we opposed. Mm -hmm. That was muscled through. What did you see at the time? Why did you oppose it? Firstly, it was the power that was going to be vested in the minister. Mm -hmm. I remember specifically we caucused about it. And I remember specifically the Honorable Venani opposed it. I remember specifically the Honorable Dinda opposed it after we had, of course, had an internal conversation about this. It was a, it was a thick bill. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, at the time, the Honorable Shangala labeled us with all these sort of things. The, there was conversations about pe some people being big fish in corruption, others being smaller fish and all these things. But when we pointed these things out, of course it was rubbish. Of course it was said, individuals' corruption is not as big as it is, as, as, as we allege it is. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Had it not been for a video of a foreigner, corruption in Namibia would be as business as usual. But a foreigner, your MPs, Namibians, in the name of PDM, consistently point out corrupt practices. Mm -hmm. No one listens. But luckily, for the sake of Namibians, one foreigner comes with a video and people are caught red-handed. The very people that were saying that we're talking about, there's no corruption. Yeah. The very people that were defending corruption were caught with their hands in the cookie jar. In fact, the saying goes further that says, no, Swapo is not corrupt. It is individuals in Swapo that are corrupt. Mm -hmm. It is now found that money has been transferred directly to Swapo. Mm -hmm. So are we, are we still going to have, to, to have people who say Swapo is not corrupt? So, so, so if, if I give you stolen money, is it fair to say that uh, it's PDM that's corrupt? M me as yes, yes. Yes. Is it fair to say PDM it, is it, corrupt it or is, It is fair yeah. to say if you and I have an agreement that PDM is running the town of Opuo, I'm going to give you a tender in Opuo to do a number of things. If you give me money to use for to, to, to use to build uh, a PDM office, mm -hmm. surely I'm corrupt. Surely you are corrupt, and through me. I'm corrupting PDM because PDM is a legal entity. It's not a, it's not a, pers a personal, it's, it's not a person. Mm -hmm. PDM does not have legs to walk. It doesn't have hands to take. Mm -hmm. So my, the ex my actions, are like if PDM would be vicariously liable if, if it were the law for my actions. Mm -hmm. My actions cannot be severed from PDM. Mm -hmm. So if people went in the name of Swapo and said, we need to campaign. For but the but for what if your president comes out and says, it's not true, we never send VIPWA? to get money on behalf of the party. Well, the money went away. If, if, the, if the president, if my president received money and never asked where it's coming from, mm -hmm. what does that make him? Yeah. It makes him tacitly liable. Mm -hmm. it, it makes him uh, tacitly accept money that he doesn't know where it's gonna come from. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can say that, um, you can say that, uh, that yes, we are big and we are receiving money from all over the show. And for that reason, I could not have been aware that this money has come from corrupt practices. But tell me, what measures have you put in place, yeah. knowing that you're in government, mm -hmm. knowing that there's a risk of corruptors corrupting your party, your, that, that, your, that your officials will be corrupt, take some money for themselves, take others bring to the party. Yeah. What, what measures have we put in place? Mm -hmm. Because remember in 2014 already, no, 15, is the time when we had the Harambe Prosperity Plan. I'm taking now back to the ruling yeah. party. You asked about me, but mm -hmm. I'm taking it back there. Uh, it's the time when we had the Harambe Prosperity Plan where we talked about transparency in government, where we talked about corruption. It's, this is the same period where we had three ministers, apparently, including the, your minister, Saki Jangala, mm -hmm. where your, 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 your three ministers, have four ministers have allegedly been asked to write letters mm -hmm. to explain various corrupt practices. But Namibia never saw the day of light of what actually happened or what this, how these people explained, what reprimand they got, all these things, until such time that is it one or two, at least one of those alleged ministers is now sitting in jail. Yeah. But guess what? If you are not a corrupt organization, you would take actions as, organization, as an organization against these individuals. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What, have, what, has, what? what has happened in respect of these ministers? Intra-party. Mm -hmm. Has there been disciplinary action? Charges at least that the public is informed that are going to be uh, uh, leveled against them? Mm -hmm. Have we seen them being removed from bodies, 
body structures of, of, of the organization? No. Well, perhaps they are waiting for the court to play itself out. Because well, what they should then do if they are found uh, to be innocent? You, you see, uh, Matthias, and that is where we sometimes go wrong. I, Vipua, am serving in... It's a privilege to serve in public office. And the level of integrity that I need to depict can never be measured on, on the standard of proof of criminal liability, mm -hmm. i.e. beyond reasonable doubt. I would tell you that if I am part of a cabinet where, or an executive where three of my alleged members or four of my alleged, uh, alleged ministers have stolen two billion dollars, you should resign in protest. If, as a president of an organization, I'm talking about the president of the Republic, the president of SWAPO, mm -hmm. if you are alleged, or if it is alleged to have, th th that you have benefited in your internal party processes from the stealing and looting of state money, it is incumbent on the president of the Republic, Dr. Hage Gengo, to resign as president of SWAPO, mm -hmm. to resign as president of the Republic. Why? Because the standard of proof of public office can never be in, uh, innocent and unproven guilty. Yeah. It, it, it can never, it, it, it is never at the same, it can never be at the same levels. Yeah. Because the integrity that we uphold is, is far bigger than the technicalities that could perhaps have the case thrown out in, uh, in, in, a, criminal, in, a, in, in a criminal case. Yeah. So if, you, if, if you were the president of this country at this very moment, yes. how would you have dealt with this scandal? The country? Yes, if you are the president of the republic. Oh, of, of the republic? Yes, how would you have dealt with this country? I, I, I tell you, um, a very good question. Two, well, one thing. First and foremost, if I'm to become president of Namibia tomorrow, every institution, SOE, government, uh, government institution, where corruption is alleged to have happened, internal investigations must happen, be concluded within 100 days. Every person that has, that is, that is alleged to have stolen must pay back. If they don't pay back, uh, uh, civil proceedings would be pushed against them. Of course, you have the law and you have prescription laws and all these things. But we also know that, take, a, take, take for instance GIPF. You have individuals who are apparently have taken money from GIPF, did bad business, could not pay back. But these individuals today are holding high-ranking offices. Some of them are presiding over cases where you and I would appear and where if you owe someone, he must now judge against, against you when he has not paid back public money that he's taken. Mm -hmm. So these individuals, when, if, if, if debt is prescribed and they are failing to pay back, they must then relinquish the positions because then they do not... Uh, uh, they're not fit and proper to hold, of, to hold those specific offices. That's one. Yeah. Two, um, if I was president of the Republic, oh, you know, let, let me not say that. If PDM came into power, of course, then it would be the President McHenry mm -hmm. who would be president. I have no such, aspir <laughs> I have no such aspirations. Um, if PDM came to power, our first and foremost uh, uh, empowerment drive would be agriculture. Okay. Agriculture that supports directly 70% of Namibians. You, you can't have in a republic as rich as Namibia where people can take 600 million and get away with it. 2 billion and get a, 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 wrist, a slap on, on, the, on the wrist. And still have people that are plowing with donkeys. This year we got abundant rain, and I, I just told you that I'm, I'm coming from plowing. That's why I'm this dark. Mm -hmm. You know, you need every person that has an energy like, like, that has energy, to actually produce food for this country. And Corona has really taught us that 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 we need to be self-sufficient. Thirdly, our education system. How is it? And then, you know, I'm now going to sing the songs that we always yeah. sing and that Swapo say they will do and they never do. How, how is it that our education system is failing? And you would reali have realized that since the time of the Honorable Katrina Hansa Imarwa to, to present, mm -hmm. Swapo does not actually know what to do with the education system. 
Now grade nines must write the ex external exam. Now it's grade tens. Now grade tens must be chucked out. Now it, the school is only going to grade eleven. Where we are going with this? Mm -hmm. Yet you have kids that are just being pushed to tertiary level others cannot afford. So some of these things uh, we, 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 we have to, we would focus on as a, as, as a, as a, as, as, as government. Yeah. Further, it is our health system. Okay. There's no way and no reason why the national health system should look worse than the private health, uh, health sector. Because if you, if you really look at it, if you go to Lady Pohamba or you go to uh, Medi Clinic uh, or Medi Park uh, in Ogundiva, and you go to this uh, Karatura Hospital across this new Swapo, mm -hmm. state of the art Swapo office, it is these other institutions are like in another country, and these state ones are in another country. Are we suggesting that <laughs> by any account that, uh, that the private sector has more money than government? Of course not. Mm -hmm. So those. If, if I were to be president of the PDM, were to be in power, these are the things that, of course, would be priori prioritized. Mm -hmm. The youth must be produced, or must produce. Uh, hospital systems must work for the for the lowest earning Namibian. Our schools should be able to produce uh, uh, astronauts. Yeah, well, well and good rhetoric. Like I said earlier, you are a politician after all. Give me government and you will see. Yeah. Or give uh, give, <laughs> PDA, give PDA government and you will see. Yeah. Let me take you back. To, to fish rod yes. and specifically the legal sector yes. in which you are qualified. Yes. It seems that uh, the sector's integrity is in question. Now. <laughs> yes. It seems that uh, your colleagues in the industry were some were key players in this, in making things happen. What yes. is the way forward in terms of monitoring <sighs> and ensuring that there are it adequate measures to prevent some of these things that happened? You see, Matthias, fellow Namibians, the laws are there. The laws against many of these things that we are talking about are there. Uh, the law of the, the, the Fisheries Act did not have to be abused in this manner. Of course, it was amended for a specific reason, but one person could have said, no, I'm not going to be part of this. So we have the Bank of Namibia that uh, the financial and the financial intelligence act mm -hmm. that has clear checks and balances against money laundering against all this uh, organized crime we have that if people just did their job you would have you would have uh, um, these things could have been picked up long time ago mm -hmm. but of course if you follow those fish road videos individuals are saying that no, we have political capital. That is what they actually told to this foreigner. When this person is saying, well, aren't we going to be a bit... No, no, no don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. We have political capital. So, and, and it, to add to that, one day I was in, speaking to a senior official at the, at the ACC. I'm not going to say who. And this person actually told me that ah, we want to do something about corruption. The politician is the problem. That's the ACC saying that. I might as well say that. Mm -hmm. You see, political capital in Namibia has been the problem. Where perhaps uh, the Financial Intelligence Act did not work to catch this because, i.e., the lawyers involved are pretty uh, high-ranking in the ruling party mm -hmm. and therefore feel they can do anything they want. Secondly, if it is... Um, the ruling party doing it, I as a member, uh, I as a, an employee of, of, of Bank of Namibia, what am I to do? Because we are now talking about this fish rot thing going from the very bottom of Swapo, i.e. individuals going to Congress receiving money, mm -hmm. to the boss. Of course, Swapo is now saying the boss is not the president. Of course, what we are hearing, you and I, uh, uh, at least me, is that the boss is the president of Swapo in the Republic. Oh, these are the reports that are coming out. So p individuals who are sitting at, uh, what is this, Bank of Namibia are probably sitting there thinking, well, what should I do if this whole trail of things is running through the spine of Swapo to the very top? The other institution that should have checked, that should have these checks and balances is the law society. Of course, the law society does not peep into your accounts yeah. uh, per, per se. But we have regular annual audits. Uh, and 
these things should have been picked up. But nonetheless, if it is not picked up, you have a law society council. Mm -hmm. They should have taken the decisions that are that befitted to protect the integrity of the of the mm -hmm. of, of the profession. And that court application would not have gone as, as, as it did. Yeah. But of course, because individuals did not, mm -hmm. the court application failed as, as, as it did. Yeah, but, but Mr. Moruka, you're also aware that uh, there's been talks and perceptions of conflicts at the council. And you know pretty well that uh, your, your, your field, the legal field that is, of course, is very close-knit. So how do, you t how do you address some of I'm those? I'm not not agreeing. Yeah, yeah, how do you address some of those issues? You see... We swear, just like I swore at Parliament, I swore in front of the High Court, in front of a judge of the High Court when I was admitted, to say that I'll protect the constitution of this country. That should speak to the conscience of each person. And your ethics tells you that if a client comes to you wanting you to do something illegal, you must refrain. Not to say that, yes, yes, you want to do, you want to do something illegal and you'll be arrested, but you know, don't worry, I'll, I'll try and sort it out. Mm -hmm. it, it is our duty as legal practitioners to protect the constitution and the integrity. Mm -hmm. So if the conflicts that you're talking about, conflicts of interest that exist within council, i.e. maybe um, a personal relationship, be that personal relationship, be that, um, be that, be that professional relationship, mm -hmm. a council a, a, a member of the council should be able to say, look, I'm recusing myself from this specific matter when you discuss it. If no, it's but so, you have last time almost half, more than half of the council was conflicted. It, well, if they are conflicted and they cannot form a quorum, then the best thing to do is to resign. <laughs> yes, is you resign, you allow people who are not conflicted to be voted on to council, council to convene, look at the matter, after they look at the matter, they give the proper authority for, um, what is this, for, 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 say for instance, for a court application to be lodged. Mm -hmm. I mean, how is it that a council of the law, half of a council of the law society is conflicted against one person? Mm -hmm. That basically is telling you that that person is then controlling that whole, that whole council. Mm -hmm. Or what is that telling you? If the council cannot deal with one lawyer, in the country. What is that telling you about that whole council? Mm -hmm. I would say then it would be then incumbent on those council members to say, folks, uh, this thing, the integrity of the profession hinges on this particular case. And because we cannot carry out because of our conflict, yeah. we are resigning, let others come and take that decision. Mm -hmm. But of course, council cannot be, act because if you don't do that, then council will be acting as a gatekeeper. And of course, council cannot be a gatekeeper for individuals. Yeah. When it's, when it's uh, Muharuka, Muharuka, rather I should say my surname correct, council can act. But when it's um, Kadila Momo, council cannot, cannot act. When it's Sisa uh, Namanje, council cannot act. It can act against uh, Kauta, but it cannot act against uh, um, which other lawyer? Mm -hmm. Chituri. Mm -hmm. that, that can never be the case. Then, then the integrity of the whole law society and the profession would fall, would fall through. Mm -hmm. So I, I would really, and it would be actually my proposal. I have not perhaps had uh, time to suggest that to individuals, but if they cannot act uh, and take a decision, say for instance, to yeah. have books opened mm -hmm. and so forth, then clearly they, they must resign. Yeah. So, so would you then say, especially after the, their case with, uh, with Mr. Namanje, would you then say there's a, have they perhaps to a certain extent lost the level of authority that they ought to have in the profession, that regulatory authority? I, I, I would not hasten to, to answer that in the affirmative. Uh, you know, even if the politician in me want, want to say that. He, 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 because there are of course many factors to, 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 each, to each particular case, in each particular particular individual mm -hmm. um, and the conflicts of course that would arise from others have been instructed before others have worked with them before and on all these things mm -hmm. so it others would perhaps be just mere perception yeah. so you, you can't jump to the conclusion that this is the is is, is necessarily saying 
that they've lost um, the, 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 the integrity as, as, uh, as, a, as a regulatory body. Yeah. But, but the mere fact that they cannot take a decision against one individual mm -hmm. should have each and every one of those council members have introspection yeah. and say that. I want to protect the profession, I want to protect the constitution, and because I know um, Vipua personally, and I cannot act, in this case is, is a pivotal case for the integrity. Uh, I, I, I might not have lost that authority, sure. but I don't want the whole council to lose that authority and com uh, the ability to command that authority, and therefore I'm recusing myself. Yeah. But we are talking about lawyers, mm -hmm. but it also goes against politicians, you know? Um, individuals that are very prominent in in public discourses. Mm -hmm. Very few of us are actually talking about this. We have selective morality when it comes to these things, and that that is, that, that is general. Yeah. You know when it when 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 the conversation is about the honourable Venani, Muharuka will keep quiet because of my relationship with Venani. Mm -hmm. If Venani killed a person. Regardless of how much pain that puts me in, mm -hmm. I should be able to voice to, to voice the issue because of the Namibian constitution and because of the office that I hold. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, when it comes to, say, for instance, um, any 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 person that is close to you as a, as a public office holder, mm -hmm. you should be able to talk. Now we have this selective morality. And the selective morality, just to point out, is how we look at corruption. We look at corruption as if corruption is only starting with this current president. Corruption is inherent mm -hmm. in Swapo. You talk about social security money, JPF money, all these things happened from the time before this current president. Mm -hmm. You look at the amount of tenders that the, that the, 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 the pr president preceding to this one. Yeah daughters or family has had and now the lately we've heard about how the first families have been accorded all these um, uh, fishing, fishing rights and fishing quarters and all these things yeah uh, uh, we, we can't just pin it in, in this selective morality against president Gengob. yeah it, it it goes against the whole swapo and upright up upright members of swapo whether members of parliament ordinary members members of uh, uh, the executive should be able to say that well I didn't steal, but I'm part of an organization that has system that has made corruption systemic, and for that reason, I'm resigning. Yeah. So for for as long as you have individuals who have, who are apparently claiming innocence, but are still part of an organization where corruption is is systemic, then of course you don't have leaders. You have people who are saving their own their own bellies. Yeah. I think as we move to the final segment of, of, of this interview, um, a year or two ago, um, the ACC Director General, Mr. Noah, said that one of the reasons why they as an institution are also struggling to effectively tackle corruption is because of what he termed as one-man laws. Like the 2015 amendments you spoke of when you said that it gives an individual too much power. Um, perhaps. As a legislator, what, what is the way forward in this regard? I'm sure there are a couple of these laws that you can think of from the top of your head. I don't think, I don't, I don't think, yes, one-man laws are a problem. Um, you can think about a number of them. You have the Local Authorities Act, where a minister can remove a wholly elected uh, a council. If they don't, maybe amongst other things, want to do what the minister wants to do. And in that in that particular law specifically, I was saying that. You see, you can't have you can't have one person, and this was the position of PDM, mm -hmm. one person decide. You must always have the checks and balances against the actions of that particular person. Yeah. In in as much as you need checks and balances against mm -hmm. the councils. So one man laws are not necessarily a problem because yeah. even if it's a one man uh, one man law, even if one person has the authority, like the fishing uh, uh, in the, 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 the Fisheries Act. It is still illegal to use your office to gratify yourselves. It is still illegal to have corruption. So the law still caters for Mr. Noah under the 
anti-corruption act mm -hmm. for where a person has used that one man law to benefit or to gratify himself but what is the law that you as legislators have passed gives you enough room to maneuver you are still within the ambit of the law like how um, minister Esau, the way he was giving why, why, out the quotas why is he sitting in, in yeah jail? why is he sitting in jail mm -hmm. why is he sitting in, in the cells he's sitting in the cells because he maneuvered and it's proven that he or not proven actually mm -hmm. i must i must refrain i must refrain from that but it's it's now alleged that actually yes the law allowed you to do a b c d to give these rights but you gave these rights in benefiting yourselves or an organization you did it corruptly that is the allegation mm -hmm. so mr noah cannot claim but because the law says that the person is maneuvered and for that reason i sit idle yeah. and guess what we are talking about actions that has been happening for how long the acc i understand has been sitting on this case for a very long time mm -hmm. when these people were still saving ministers the acc was aware about this case so Corruption in Namibia is systemic. There is no way that anyone can, or at least uh, convince me, <laughs> that it's not. Yeah. And the the anti-corruption is the anti-corruption commission is part and parcel of covering up corruption. Okay. Because had it not been that law, it gives them sufficient power to act against corrupt, uh, corrupt, uh, corruptees and, corrupt, corruptees. and, and corruptors. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Maruku, thank you very much for coming through. Thank you. Thank you for the time. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.